Hello everyone, my name is Vanessa and I'll be presenting Many to One Wearable Interactions, a unique audience engagement with a performance stage through the use of a wristband. To begin, I will start with a brief introduction on how I got here. I was first introduced to physical computing during my second year of undergrad study at York University in the Digital Media Program in 2016. In 2017, I had the opportunity to attend the opening ceremony of the Invictus Games and I got introduced to a interactive wristband created by Pixmob. In 2020, I applied and got in accepted into the Masters of Digital Media program where I started this research. And as of now, in 2021, I have created a prototyped wristband that interacts uniquely with a visualization. To start off, hardware, the fun stuff, at least for me. What's inside the wristband? Inside of each wristband locates an Arduino Maker 1000 board, an accelerometer sensor, a NeoPixel Jewel, which is seven LED, RGB LEDs, and a LiPo battery. What does it look like? So this is what it looks like inside of the wristband. We have the Arduino board that's located on the bottom, the accelerometer and the LED that is soldered and placed right above the Arduino board and the LiPo battery that is connected to the Arduino's battery port. Above that we see an image of a 3D modeled resin printed case that has three layers to it. The three components include a layer for the LiPo battery, a layer for the Maker 1000 board, the accelerometer and the LED, and the top layer which is the lid to make it to protect the board and also make it visually more appealing. It's important to take note that the bottom layer with the battery port is actually the battery, the LiPo battery is actually not necessary in a live event in person event since I would be able to plug in the battery to the port ahead of time and give this to the participant right before they get engaged with the interaction which would mean that these, this board would have to be redesigned to be a bit more wide, but we would have a little bit of a less tall um, design than what we currently have here, which has all three layers and also an accessible port for the micro USB that allows the participants to connect this to their computer and update their own Wi-Fi, so for the connection. And then they would unplug the micro USB and connect the LiPo battery to the Arduino battery port to start off the wristband. If we look all the way on the top over there, we see three prototypes of the wristband with three different colors, which are um, colors that are changed according to the accelerometer's data. They are connected to Wi-Fi, to the visualization, and uniquely to their own accelerometer for the colors. If we see here, right above, we have a picture of the wristband on my wrist to see the size, the scale, and the bulkiness of the wristband. Now, how does it all work? So the wristbands are connected to Wi-Fi that then sends the accelerometer data to MQTT, which we have here used the broker shifter, the shifter broker, and then we have Node.js that subscribes to the MQTT data, converts it, and sends it out to sockets. Uh, currently we have socket.io available and web sockets. So socket.io is connected to the p5.js browser which creates the visualization on a browser that is accessible to everyone, which is the one that we are currently using for the demonstration due to the current situation of everyone being remote. But it is possible, so it is possible to use the web socket um, and connect it to Unity to create a better visualization and also to connect it and project it onto a bigger screen in a live in-person event. But for now, we have just stuck with the browser version so that every participant can have access to the visualization at the comfort of their own house. Node.js also converts the LED 
the data to L the accelerometer data to LED friendly 0 to 255 and sends those numbers back to MQTT that sends it back to the wristbands uh, to change the colors of the LEDs on the, each wristband. It's important to note that it's not actually necessary to have Node.js convert and send the data back to the Arduino as the Arduino itself can convert the accelerometer data to the LED data. But this is an extra step that we have created for future work where we can have the server, the Node.js server, directly control all of the wristbands. We can make um, designs, we can change each L uh, wristband separately, or we can control all of them, turn them all off, change the color of all of them, and just play around with it. But for now, it's an extra step that is not exactly necessary. Next, we will have a demonstration. I have sent two of the wristbands out to my friends. Prior to the demonstration, they have connected them to their own home Wi-Fi, and we are doing this through a Zoom call. So we have each of them connecting the wristband to battery and then slowly uploading the code to the boards and then having them connected to the browser. So as we see, each um, wristband is controlling one cube and the rotation is moving according to the accelerometer data that is getting sent. I then connect my own and you can see that the LED is changing and giving feedback that is changing according to the art the accelerometer data and it's unique to my own wristband so it wouldn't light up and change colors according to my friends wristbands. Next we will have a live demonstration of all of this working. So first off I will connect the Arduino board to the LiPo battery, give it a few seconds to upload the code and then we will see the data flowing on the screen screen here with MQTT through the shifter broker. We can see all those dots are data that is sent, getting sent back and forth through the accelerometer to the Node.js to the browser. So when we rotate the wristband, we can see that on this side, we have the browser and we have the cube that is rotating according to the accelerometer and to the wristband's rotation. We also see that the wristband is, the LED on the wristband is changing colors according to the rotations. So it's a unique thing. So it wouldn't work if my LED, my wristband was getting rotated. The other, the other wristbands would not change colors as it only changes colors following its own accelerometer to give feedback to tell you that your wristband is working. Thank you for attending and I hope you enjoy the rest of our showcase. Hello everyone, my name is Vola Spiridovich and welcome to my oral presentation. My research was dedicated to artificial intelligence and its impact, so I focused on employee and workforce adaptation as a result of artificial intelligence deployment. And I will begin with a brief topic introduction. Artificial intelligence is a broad term that refers to technology or machines that can mimic human intelligence, such as solve problems on their own. It is also an umbrella term that includes multiple technologies. We know it has the advantage of quickly digesting a vast amounts of data and revealing trends and patterns that can be used to personalize and customize the products. As a result, many companies around the world are growing the AI investments. The total market for AI software is projected to grow up to 126 billion in 2025. 
the potential of AI technologies to supplement, replace, and amplify nearly all tasks currently performed by humans is what makes it special. There are fears that artificial intelligence will destroy employment, introduce even more inequalities, and even erode wages. Manufacturing jobs have been disappearing for years, and now that AI applications are becoming integral parts of many industries, job losses may intensify. Many common occupations, such as truck driving, journalism, medical imaging services, and accounting, may be jeopardized. This could result in a widespread civil instability. So what we know now. There are several experts who predict high unemployment rates and mass idleness. According to Frey and Osborne research, 47% of today's employment might be automated during the next two decades. AI advances and grows better and understanding what consumers want and need. As a result, intelligent chatbots will take up more and more of the burden as speech recognition and natural language processing improve. Experts, experts predict that by 2030, AI-enabled robots will handle 85% of consumer contacts. Abelianski evaluates that industrial robots might replace up to 37.9 million workers in a high displacement scenario and 12.2 million workers under a low displacement scenario by the year 2030. In Canada, 4.7 million full-time employees will be potentially displaced with the overall automation potential of 47%, which represents 7.2 million employees. However, we are unable to identify the forms of societal unrest that may accompany massive worldwide unemployment at this time. On the other hand, there are predictions indicating that the changes will not be as drastic. Jobs that need creativity and emotional intelligence are not at risk of becoming automated. Plus, technology rarely automates major occupations completely. From 1950 to 2010, 271 occupations were eliminated for a variety of reasons, including technological obsolescence. Even though there was a lot of automation during this time period, it was nearly all partial automation. There was only one occupation, elevator operators, being mainly attributed to automation. Computers create about as many jobs as they eliminate. The main effect of automation for the time being will not be to eliminate jobs, but to redefine them increase productivity as a result of technological advancements. The number of bank tellers and paralegal has increased despite the ATM and electronic discovery software. Another important fact to remember is that despite the technological advancements, in many areas, the unemployment rate in Canada has been dropping in the past decade. So when it comes to the research outcomes, I found that there are numerous misunderstandings about how AI works, as well as worries that smart computers would completely replace humans. Policies and common data standards must be in place for a successful AI operation. The compliance with these standards would ensure that companies will not breach any laws. Algorith algorithms that are clear and explainable will build confidence. This will increase society's trust in AI. To force the comprehension rather than fear, it should be revealed how and where choices are made. If we do not have policy in place, it will be impossible for us to understand what these artificial intelligence systems are doing. A collaborative effort between governments and businesses should be made to develop competent employee training programs that will boost competition in the labor market and transform the way we work to adapt to a world driven by AI. This will allow creating an environment where more individuals can be skilled and productive. Companies should invest in training their employees to acquire new skills and provide opportunities for them to learn on the job. This will help them compete globally and provide a satisfying career to individuals.
The government should also invest in training programs that will improve people's skill set, which they can use when looking for a job or starting their own business. To close the gap, companies will need to invest in upskilling their workforce. There is a need for a reformed education strategy that will enable students to have relevant skills in the current job market, and they are ready to adapt to a rapidly changing environment. We need to prepare individuals to both adapt to and take advantage of new developments. There should be a greater emphasis on the digital skills and new technology. Investing in high quality education for children who are not yet in the labor force will be critical in preparing them to compete not just with their colleagues in the lower income nations, but also with machines in high income ones. I hope you enjoyed my oral presentation. Thank you for your time. Goodbye. Hello, everybody. So um, who's this guy talking right now? Uh, so uh, my name is Mio Choi Yin. Uh, you, you can just simply call me Choi. Uh, I'm a, a three-stack animator and designer who graduated from a Bachelor of Animation degree at Sheridan College and soon will be graduated from Ryerson with a Master's degree. Uh, I'm an effective communicator and researcher with proven dedication in media production, aiming to combine original specialization in animation and film with elegant digital media innovation to create advanced concepts in the modern digital uh, media industry. Uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, and also, of course, everything you need to know about us is on our website. So my RP focused on machine learning, in storyboarding, and storytelling. And of course, I did everything by myself. Um, what is my RP really about? Uh, my MRP is a literature review paper that interrogate and discuss the possibility of applying machine learning technology into storyboarding process from an animation and film industry perspective. In current animation or film production studio, most of the storyboarders' creative process is a repeating process of manually editing and visualizing content from a script. Those repeating processes are all inefficient and could be limiting. The paper will identify many machine learning methods positioned in the production pipeline and their advantages and disadvantages. Finally, my research paper will address and discuss a concept of how to apply machine learning technology into storyboarding software to assist storyboarders. And um, some of the guests here might be familiar with the word storyboard, but others may not. Story and cardboard, or oh, sorry, board, what is that? Um, so I'll start with the definition of storyboard. Um, before actual shooting or post-production, the composition of the image is illustrated and the continuous scene is broken down into units of image panels with the marketing information. This set of image panels is called a storyboard. Storyboard is mainly established by four elements. Uh, um, here's an example. I used my storyboard as an example. Uh, numbering, you number, number the scene and panels. Image, show the content. Uh, time, to show how long this scene and the panel would be. And also description to uh, inform the information that's not included in the image. Um, although the traditional storyboarding process and techniques has produced many excellent animation and film production, it still has many issues. 
storyboarding process have many repeating labors, high cost, occupy the majority of the time in production, revision decreased production efficiency. Here's Mark uh, Simon, is a legendary storyboard artist. Uh, he believed that there should be a universal platform for a storyboard artist to, to access Dr. Knows, uh, director knows easily. A storyboard artist's re responsibility is in per production should be more towards ensuring scene continuity, animation, background setting instead of repeating ex extract information and organizing. Um, let's talk about machine learning and current machine learning technology application in the industry. Uh, at present, the main application of machine learning technology in the animation and film industry is to improve the automation level of creation and pipeline management significantly. The purpose is to uh, liberate uh, workers from many traditional repeat, repetitive tasks to a certain extent to have more energy to focus on more creative work. The machine learning technology has already been widely used in editing special effects and visual development processes. Um, so here's an example from Avenger uh, Infinite War, uh, which used new machine learning algorithm to reflect the uh, gentle psychological changes of the character more realistically. So later on, animators, animators don't have to repeatedly fix the 3D mesh. Um, since machine learning technology provided possible solution to editing and special <clears throat> effects problems in industry, can machine learning technology help storyboarding? After analyzing related studies, there are three kinds of machine learning methods that can be applied to the storyboarding process. They are end-to-end -end machine learning, interactive machine learning, and assistant machine learning. First, let's look at the end-to-end. -end. In the training process of the end-to-end -end machine learning model, a prediction result would be obtained from the input end, which is raw input data, to the output end. In this process, a deviation would be obtained uh, compared with the real result. This deviation will be transmitted to each layer in the model the representation of each layer will be adjusted according to this deviation until the model converges or the expected in fact is achieved. This kind of machine learning working mechanism is called end-to-end. -end. Uh, in production pipeline, the relationship between the storyboard artist and the end-to-end -end machine learning model would be looks like this. The storyboard manually draws out the scenes according to the script. With the end-to-end -end model, it can anal analyze the training data based on the script, then the directly output generated scenes. With the continued development, it could completely replace the position of storyboarder in the pipeline. Move on to the interactive methods. Uh, interactive ma um, machine learning is the design and implementation of algorithm and intelligent user interface frameworks that facilitate machine learning with help of human interaction. Interactive methods pay more attention to the incomplete context understanding and naive generalization than other training machine learning models, in particular end-to-end -end systems. Here is an example from a project developed by Disney Research Lab. The software allows users to <clears throat> work independently on the same story, while machine learning algorithms provide the ability to automatically synchronize their efforts and resolve conflicts that might arise. The, then it is automatically creates 3D scenes. Uh, here is the assisted model, assisted machine learning. Methods is primarily used as a means of automating simple processing and task by harnessing the combined power of big data, cloud, and data science to aid in decision making. Using machine learning algorithm by itself simply don't work. Human import is absolutely critical to help assist machine learning model perform successfully. And here's our examples that can represent the application of system machine learning models in storyboarding process. The storyboarder inputs incomplete storyboard panels is the machine learning model identify what kind of story is it is. In this case, it's a bank robbery. The model studies the typical elements in a bank robbery story and then fill up the missing part of the storyboard. Finally, it collaborates with the human uh, or the storyboarders to generate 3D scenes. Uh, as we mentioned before, the current storyboarding process facing many problems such as uh, repeating labors, high cost, occupy the majority of the pre-production time, and endless revision. On the other hand, the machine learning method we looked at before can combine hand drawing techniques and machine learning algorithm for better storyboarding experiences. Therefore, I believe the combination of those two is inevitable in the future of animation and the film industry. And that's all I have for eight minutes. I uh, wish I have more time, but I believe uh, my cohorts have more amazing things to present. And anyway, thank you for watching.